Did you uh, email it? Yes, I just emailed it. To um, my CS account? Uh, yes. Eric Wong at CS. That's it. So our project is on understanding fast food. The context of our <coughs> project is that kernel methods have wide applications as for learning class such as fluid regression, PCA, etc. However, kernel methods are computationally expensive. And fast food is the name of a kernel approximation technique which aims at alleviating this computation burden. I will start with a brief review on the kernel method and kernel matrix. Then I'm going to introduce the randomized approximation technique called random kitchen sink, which is the method that fast food builds on top of. And we are going to introduce fast food. We present experiments in order to pro provide insight into how fast food works and how fast food compares to the prior methods. Then we show our analytical theoretical attempts on improving the response and also improving the kernel approximation error. As we learned in the class, a kernel can be considered as the <laughs> inner product in a feature space. Um, and assume we have Assume we have n training samples in d dimension. And by the representer theorem, we can write the decision function as a linear combination of the training samples. So this means at, high time, at test time, making predictions are expensive because the time is linear to the number of training samples. And in large scale data set, doing this prediction for each new sample is infeasible. And random pigeon six tries to solve this problem by approximating the inner product with inner product of a of finite dimensional vectors. So by Volkner theorem, the kernel can be considered as a Fourier transform of a probability measure, which turns out to be the expectation of the inner product of the exponential of omega transpose x, omega transpose y <coughs> under the probability measure. The, under the probability measure omega. And the main idea of random kitchen six is that instead of computing this expectation, we take samples, we take samples of omega and approximate this expectation by the empirical average. And in in the case of Gaussian kernels, the Fourier transform of Gaussians are Gaussian. So we randomly sample Gaussian vectors from omega one to omega to omega m of the dimension we compute this feature vector. And, to, and because now we have a finite dimensional feature vector, we can, learn, we can directly learn a hyperplane as our decision rule, in which case we do not depend on the size of the training, on the size of the training system <coughs> rule. Computing this feature map requires a matrix multiplication of size d by m. And it also takes storage of d by m to store this random matrix. So the key thing that FASU tries to solve is this dependence on d. 
because when you have very high dimensional data like images, that's very expensive. So um, the, in particular, the matrix that fast food uses instead of this Gaussian random matrix is a product of a number of matrices. And the key thing here is that the only the random matrices are S, G, Pi, and B. S is a random scaling matrix. G is a diagonal Gaussian matrix. So now you only have Gaussians on the diagonal rather than in every element. You have a random permutation matrix. And you have a, a diagonal binary matrix with just plus or minus 1 on the diagonals. So this is very fast to compute. The Hadamard products can be the, pro the product of the Hadamard matrices can be <coughs> computed using the Hadamard transform very fast, very quickly, and a lot of these matrices are diagonal, so that also makes the product itself fast. So this speeds up the computation, and it also you don't need to store the Hadamard matrices, and you don't uh, you only need to store the diagonal Gaussian matrices and the scaling matrices. So your storage also goes down, and <clears throat> The fast food matrix is a concatenation of multiple blocks, where each block is this kind of matrix. The blocks are independent. <coughs> so now I'll talk a little bit about the experiments. The first experiment we did was basically looking at the approximation error of the kernels. So there's the, you can get a kernel approximation from RKS, or random kitchen sinks, and a kernel approximation from fast food. And as you increase the number of basis functions, you see that the approximation error goes down. And further, the approximation error between fast food and random kitchen things is actually pretty close. The second test that we do is uh, looking at the actual accuracy of your classifier. Um, and we find that you can get pretty close to the root mean square error of using the exact kernel with using RKS or using fast food. So we know that in expectation, um, the fast food approximation reaches a kernel, but 